appreciate everybody for uh, uh, joining us uh, today. Uh, I wanted to uh, invite Paul on to uh, review the new Eero product. Um, product has just uh, launched and uh, hit the shelves, so um, uh, we've got product available, and we figured now would be a good time to follow up and make sure that everybody is familiar with the new series of products. So, um, so Paul, thanks for uh, joining us today, and uh, with that, I'll turn it over to you, Paul, and we'll get started. Okay, great. Thanks, Bill. Um, as Bill said, my name is Paul Momquist. I am the Pro Channel Manager for Eero. Um, and just a couple of other side notes, we will be launching some additional training on pro.eero.com uh, later this week. Uh, we just refreshed our website. So if you're a registered reseller already, there'll be some additional training for the new product that is posted. Um, and if you're not, please get registered um, at pro.ero.com, and you'll be able to view some of the training that's out there, access assets, uh, and a few other things, because it does give you a few, few features that we'll be talking about later on. So let's go ahead and get started. I know your time's limited, and we do appreciate you calling in. Um, one of the things, if you don't know that much about Eero, but if you do know, one of the things that we have done is we have taken a look at the, at the industry as a whole. Um, from a perspective of the consumer, your, your end user, um, connectivity is horrible, um, and it has been, although we can install as pros great products, great networks, and great everything else, but the most part, the, the home in reality and their view is broken. Uh, when they come to it, one quick stat there is that 70% uh, of all consumers don't consider upgrades to their networking equipment until they either move or it breaks. That's a pretty bad statistic out there in the marketplace, so we need to be able to, uh, to think about that long term, uh, especially where you have some older networks uh, in place that Eero may be able to replace them and do some upgrades later on. Um, integration over time, uh, when I started in this in industry, the, the catchphrase was convergence and how products were going to converge uh, and be unified in a, in a single user application. And integration has been a little bit, uh, little bit slow on the uptake. It's not been as perfect as what we like or even as good. And our really smart devices, uh, really smart in that they – uh, they're more interactive for us rather than being a true smart device. Um, the biggest thing that uh, is a concern out there in the marketplace and will continue to be a concern for the consumer uh, is that uh, the products aren't safe. Um, and that is a major problem, not only from the consumer perspective, but it should be also a problem from the manufacturer's perspective. And we feel that security should be brought to the forefront, and we'll talk a little bit about those reasons why as we get a little bit closer into it. Um, one couple of things that we know about um, where we are and what we need to be doing is providing great coverage across the home, and that all starts with Eero and the mesh network that we're able to create. Uh, the consumer doesn't they, – they hate buffering dropouts or even – um, having to switch SSIDs from one end of the house to the other, uh, all of those things are uh, problematic in the current world as the consumer sees it. Um, routers uh, and mesh systems aren't secure. Um, again, we believe in security and we believe in security in a large way. We'll, we'll dig a lot deeper into that later on. Um, and making sure that your customer has the best product at all times. So one of the things that you would notice about us is since we launched in 2016 is that we've released over 20 plus updates, both in uh, software updates, feature updates, as well as security updates. So we continue to make sure that that consumer or your end, end user has the best and greatest product that they possibly can. Um, and this call at the very end is um, for our technicians as well as our business owners and allowing our, allowing our networks to be set up easy, quick, uh, and they are reliable, so set it and forget it kind of opportunity, and allow those, those people to get back to the job that the consumer actually sees. The consumer really never sees that network, they just know it works. 
So the sexiness of what we do every day as professionals is very critical to our business. We give those customers great uh, home, home automation and control, audio video systems, uh, and then also whole, whole home audio outdoor lighting and other particular needs that they're looking for uh, from a professional. So uh, getting back to those things that the customer really actually sees and interacts with on a daily basis is something that we've heard across the, uh, across the diva base and they're very interested in improving their, their time for installation. What consumers ultimately want really to me is on the left-hand side of the uh, is on the left-hand side of the screen and the far right-hand side of the screen um, in mobility. Since we all now have laptops, we're not tethered to a desktop and a big PC uh, that's in some cabinet somewhere. Um, we have phones, we have tablets, we have all kinds of devices that are connected, and people want to be able to roam and use those devices anywhere that they are in their home. That's a big thing for us as far as mobility is concerned as consumers, uh, me included in that. Um, an interface that's easy to use is always fantastic. We see that through uh, the remotes that we install all the way to panels on the wall that we can install uh, across different home automation systems. So if you think about user interfaces, the consumer just wants it to be simple. And we make it that way for you as well as for the end user. Support is always a big thing for us in the marketplace. I'll spend some more time on our customer support for you as a dealer uh, at the, towards the end of the presentation. And again, security, uh, understanding that their, their systems are safe is a big issue out there in the marketplace. So to that end, let's talk about the uh, next generation of whole home Wi-Fi from Eero. Uh, we introduced Eero and Eero Beacon but it's Wi-Fi so good you'll never have to think about it again. And if you think about that from the phrase I said earlier, set it and forget it. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit of a, of, a, of a term from an infomercial, but we, uh, it, it's, it's what we actually can do for you as a dealer. So our Eero products same, stayed at the same design, twice the power. Uh, it is true tri-band. We'll talk about that by adding a third five gigahertz radio. Um, giving you an opportunity to increase throughput capabilities by up to 70% and <clears throat> range up to 15%. We've also added a thread 1.1 border router. Um, so let's go back and talk about throughput really quick. Our throughput speeds are done in a, in a couple of different ways. Um, uh, by increasing our processing power that's actually contained in the product itself as well as uh, adding that third radio. Um, you always have to remember throughput can be very dependent upon that particular customer's uh, pipe, how large it is both in and out or up or down. So please keep that uh, in the back of your mind, uh, but we can increase throughput speeds by up to 70%. Increasing a range by up to 15%, uh, one thing that I always caution there is that we have to remember the architecture or openness of a home and or the construction materials. So maybe in uh, parts of the United States where they use a lot of uh, sandstone and stucco to build homes, uh, range can be very limited, whereas uh, if we get into some newer homes with that are built with uh, in a more open floor plan, we can also increase our range there quite a bit. Um, so we want you to continue to use Eero as the heart of the system, um, plugging it in in the first position. So out of the modem and into Eero uh, is our uh, choice of installation opportunities, and we just made it better. So we also added a product called Eero Beacon. Um, for lack of a better word, it's a wall wart. It's an industry term. We understand that. Um, but what, uh, what Aero Beacon does for us is if you're doing a retro, as an example, it gives us that opportunity to have, uh, and you can't pull that, that category wire back to that one place in the house where you know you're going to need coverage, uh, but you have access to power. This gives us a great opportunity to extend that Wi-Fi into that section of the home. It could also be used in uh, master baths, kitchens, 
um, garages and other places. Now, it does have some heat sensitivity to it or cold sensitivity to it, so garages, especially in the, in the Midwest, uh, could be problematic for you, but still, if some garages are heated um, in the Midwest, so you may be able to get by with it there as well. Uh, to make sure that you have access to those wonderful sprinkler systems as well as uh, garage door openers and everything else where you may not have been earlier. So it is about the size of a nightlight, and it does have a nightlight, uh, and that is controllable. But it does give us that scalability that we were actually looking for. Um, so quick look at the product. Um, we are, again, we are for Eero, we're the same dimensions. We've added that 5.8 gigahertz router or antenna or radio to it. And then again, Thread is the 1.1 uh, border router. We'll talk a little bit about Thread as we get closer to it in just a few minutes if you're not familiar with it. But you'll notice one other change is we've changed our power to be a USB-C port over and above uh, where we were uh, on the first generation. Quick look at our um, Aero Beacon. Again, uh, we have, uh, it's a great opportunity as a full-on wall plug. Uh, and again, placing it in places where we hadn't thought that we may need coverage. Um, master bath is an example, indoor kitchen um, is another great example for us. So if you think about it that way, it's a great extension and it's also more cost effective for us because the price, if you think about the, the overall cost of a standard Eero versus an Eero beacon, um, it comes down and you can be more cost effective for your installation there. So this is a quick look inside uh, the product. Uh, you can tell that it's really engineered well. Um, I've had the opportunity to look at some other products that are in the market, so in the market that aren't this size product um, that don't look quite as good as far as this is professionally done. So, and how we do that is we do that through our vertical integration opportunity, everything from the application layer all the way down to the hardware. Our company is built in a very unique way our engineers sit all together. It's not a, while they are departmentalized from electrical engineering or mechanical engineering or packaging engineering, they all collectively work together as one unit and one team to deliver the best product out there that's possible. What all that means to us is this comes down to where we are. Um, this example of uh, how our mesh network system actually works is, um, to me, the meat of everything that we just have talked about. So if we take the top left-hand corner uh, and say that that is our first arrow in the installation, we can hardwire and or wirelessly connect every single arrow in, um, in the installation, and they all talk to each other. Um, and that's the big thing, is that we route the traffic in the best way possible. Um, these arrows are actually, when you do an installation, also ping our cloud service uh, every seven seconds. We call those heartbeats inside our company, and we receive over a billion heartbeats a day today. And that number continues to grow based on especially your installation opportunities out there. Um, what they do when they ping the cloud service is to make sure that they're, number one, they let us know that they are there and operating correctly. Uh, they check for updates, and they also make sure that they're optimized correctly for the environment that they're actually in. So it's another great opportunity for you to understand that wirelessly and or wired, we can go into any configuration you need to complete your installation for your customer. So True Tri-Band, uh, we're going to talk about this for just a minute. Um, True Tri-Band gives us um, not only does it give us better speeds uh, and range in a home, but it's, um, it's, in, the, it's in the back hall uh, as well. So we're not really dedicated in our back hall. We use the back hall opportunity in all three radios uh, to route the traffic in the best possible manner. So we're routing it forward and backwards, uh, again, in the best possible manner. And think of it this way, <coughs> excuse me, is that if you're on the interstate system and uh, there's a wreck ahead or construction and you wanted to get off of the interstate uh, to get around it but you couldn't, 
um, that's a problem for us, and that's similar to what we're talking about, especially around the, our backhaul. Um, if you are able to reroute that traffic in the fastest speed possible, you increase your throughput capabilities. So uh, we've done a great job with that, and it's working fantastic. So unmatched security. Um, we actually send our products out to be hacked. Uh, by professional hack, hacking groups such as the NCC group or SNAC. Um, they have yet to hack our standard Eero product. Um, and they actually come back to us and say, we would really love to understand what you're doing here because this is the most secure system that we've actually seen. And most of those engineers, if not all of them, do become Eero users themselves in their own homes. I think that's a huge testimony to all of us um, that a hacking engineer somebody that's paid professionally to try and break things uh, would adopt a product into their home because they feel it's the most safe and secure uh, out there and available to them. So um, how we do it is we own the process, as you saw earlier, from the application layer all the way down to the engineering of the product itself. We've designed it with WPA2 coming out of the box, and we actually give it regular software updates. Um, our systems are 99.99999% up to speed, unlike other devices that we see in the, in the marketplace where you actually have to go download uh, the latest and greatest software version of it. We do it automatically over the air free to the end user. Um, and that's, a, that's actually a selling feature for us because of the number of updates that we deliver and the, the fact that we continue to make sure that they're safe and secure. And it gets better over time. So we've added Thread 1.1 border router to our current platform, or Generation 2 platform. Um, it is a lower power, uh, so for lower power devices, such as doorbells, uh, thermostats, fans, uh, it does create its own mesh network in the home. So, and it does ride in the 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth, but it does not interfere with anything that we uh, have in the marketplace today that would, or in our standard traffic, if you will. So we are super simple to set up. Um, and what that means to us is that we can start with a smartphone. Uh, as you all know, we plug in our Eero and then we're able to go ahead and complete the installations. Now, I don't think any of us out there, uh, the marketing department didn't understand our needs there, but I don't think anybody would actually be out there barefooted doing installations in the consumer's home. Uh, some simple, quick setup tips um, here are these. Uh, starting with the modem um, into Eero, out of Eero into the switch, and then either hardwired and or wirelessly connected. Uh, in the bottom example, of course, we're outside of the switch and coming out of the modem. Um, and Eero is not the router in that position. It's a bridged uh, functionality uh, where you do lose the advanced features of Eero. It does still create that wonderful mesh network, but you lose the advanced features. Um, so keep that in mind. We can operate in bridge, but we like to see if, if you completing your installations, Eero in the first position out of the modem itself. An additional installation opportunity here is you can see that we have multiple switches in play, which we do see every day from dealers across the country. Um, out of the modem again, Eero first position, into the switch and then into additional Eero's throughout the house. Again, remember though from our diagram earlier that you can create both a wired and wireless network. It does not all have to be hardwired and it does not all have to be wirelessly connected. An example is my home. I tend to use it quite a bit um, as examples of what to do and what not to do, and we'll talk about those in just a second, what not to do's. Um, but my system is very similar to this particular out uh, configuration. Actually, it's more, com more like this configuration where I'm going into a switch and then I have both hardwired and wireless connectivity throughout my home, uh, and it's just because I'm uh, – cheap, if you will, uh, and I haven't paid a pro to come in and hardwire my home. It was built uh, 
uh, before the uh, opportunity to have uh, category wire pulled throughout the house. So um, once I get the kids out of college, maybe I'll be able to afford it. Uh, going into a more advanced uh, installation, if you will, both in a hardwired and or wireless solution, um, you can see that we are able to connect devices to our arrows as well. So if they are hardwired, you could use another switch on the other side to connect uh, games, uh, gaming devices, DVD players, televisions, whatever, on the other end, and or you could catch, connect things like NAS devices. So it's a loop through opportunity. It is a gigabit switch in the back, so it gives you that great throughput speed. In the bottom example, again, um, where you're in a bridge mode, and that would be an incorrect uh, solution for you there, um, as it would not operate properly. Setting up your Aero system really quick. Uh, if you haven't seen this, I just want to walk you through it. It's easy. All you have to do is download the app, help the uh, application understand the home that you're actually installing in, and it tells you what you're going to need as far as your products coming out of the box itself and other products located in the home. Uh, it will look for your Aero. One thing really quick, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is that Aero does use a Bluetooth radio during the setup process. Uh, and it asks you to keep those uh, arrows pretty close together so that Bluetooth can communicate with the other arrows that you're going to be installing. Uh, once those are set up, the Bluetooth radio does turn off. Uh, starting from there, it's now detected. You can name that particular arrow. Uh, your network's set up, creating that network. Um, so you're going to name it and set a password. Now your network has been created. But one of the things that uh, we actually do for our authorized resellers is we know that customers are not always at home when you're completing your installation. So an authorized reseller does have access to uh, and should be using this pro transfer feature that's available to you as an authorized reseller. So what we're going to do there is we're going to start with the same uh, pulling up the application that's already on your phone. We can switch networks. Uh, is the first button that we would select in the uh, in the menu. Switch it, and we're going to add another network with the same opportunities that we saw on setting up a standard network. Um, so now that once that network has been set up and completed, we're going to go to next, uh, which is that pro transfer feature that shows up at the bottom of your menu. That's not available to every consumer out there. That's not available to anybody other than pros. So if you think about that, that's a great feature for you. And you, again, you should be using it, uh, and there's some reasons why. So all you have to do is select transfer the network from the menu, uh, enters the consumer's information. Uh, once that is entered, you can transfer that network. We do give you a sanity check on that network. Um, what we do see are some dealers leave that network on their own phone. Uh, you could use it for remote monitoring, if you will. Uh, if you did get a call from your customer saying something was not working right, you can actually see what's going on on their network. But if you do transfer it, um, after that sanity check, it is transferred over to the um, end user, and they'll have full control and ownership. If you were to need to get back into that network, customer service can help you with that. So here is uh, one of the things that where I say what not to do, because if you looked at my network on the phone, one of the things as pros that we do so well is we map out our systems, we label our, our installations, we know where everything is actually located. And this is where Aero really comes into play, similar to what we were talking about on the, tro on the pro transfer feature. We can set up family profiles. We can set up device profiles. We can de block devices. Um, we can give guests access, uh, have integration with Alexa and other things. So um, if you took a look at my, applica my application on Eero today, you notice that those things aren't there. I do that because I use my phone every day when I'm out working with dealers uh, to show them what not to do. This is our opportunity to label everything, name everything, set up those limits, 
uh, for little Johnny who needs to be off of the internet between um, five o'clock in the afternoon and seven o'clock at night to do his homework, have dinner, finish up his homework, and then also at bedtime, maybe at 10 o'clock, uh, the network shuts off for his devices. So those things are great. They're great uses for parental controls, um, and it's what we should be doing. So we're now going to talk about Aero Plus. Aero Plus was also introduced with Generation 2. The reason we brought Aero Plus to the marketplace are these, some of these stats that you see here in front of us. So when you think about a billion identities being exposed in 2016, all the way down to $1,000 plus in average ransom amounts, those things are concerning. Those are concerning for not only uh, us as consumers, us as dealers, uh, but also your end users and making sure that those networks are safe and secure. What Aero Plus protects against are phishing scams all the way down to identities. Um, you have to always remember about networks, I and mean, I know you guys all do remember about what networks are. Uh, once I leave my home network, of course, that device, uh, unless it has additional security software installed, uh, is still vulnerable to attacks, but if it came back into the network on Eero, there would be a notification sent to the user to make sure that, um, that they get that squared away and they can actually quarantine it until it is uh, taken care of. So one of the things that Eero Plus does for us, very similar to devices and other things, is it does give us that toggle, those toggle buttons on the right-hand side of the screen to set up by device or profile on filters. So think about it that way, is that once that Aero Plus is set up on that network, it does give those capabilities of toggling on and off for mom and dad and or as children become a little bit older, they may be able to want to access some things. So um, why Aero? Uh, we're vertically integrated. Uh, all the way down. Uh, we deliver the True Mesh product, uh, proven to be secure, any home period. Uh, those are the great features and opportunities around Eero. So I think that in all, um, it's one of the greatest products I've been involved with uh, to date. I thought there were some great products earlier in my career, but I think this one it actually has more promise for the end user and delivers on, on the actual full benefits, features and benefits that uh, we continue to push out into the marketplace. So the pro program, we do have dedicated support out there and available to us. Um, this telephone number at the bottom left of, the, of your screen, 866-754-7286, actually goes into our level two uh, dedicated pro support team. So those people are actually subject matter experts, and they understand networks and how things should be uh, installed, uh, especially when it comes to Eero. They, if you do have an issue, they can actually see into the uh, into the network and, and help diagnose what the problems may be and help you uh, help you through that particular installation. Um, Decreased return rates, uh, one of the things that um, a dealer was telling me recently is that it is a set it and forget it product. He Once those, those installations are complete by that dealer base or by that dealer, he doesn't have to worry about going back to it because he knows he's learned to trust that Eero is a great product and works flawlessly. Um, discounted pricing from distribution, that gives us that margin opportunity that's out there. Spend just a minute on that one. Same dealer I was talking about a few minutes, just a minute ago was uh, a dealer out in Seattle, actually. I was working with uh, Custom Plus out there at their vendor uh, vendor fair that they had a couple couple weeks ago. And uh, he came when he came to me, he said that he had installed 30 plus networks already this year. And he said he did have a problem. Uh, and I, couldn't imagine what that problem was, especially if they'd already installed 30 plus networks. And what he said to me was, I don't know how to charge. Uh, and that's one thing that we all do face across the industry is charging for our services, our labor and everything else. So I approached it this way with him, uh, and it's a learning opportunity for all of us, I think, is that the opportunity was is that he was spending four and five hours just setting up a network, and those four or five hours were worth 
you know, maybe $125 an hour to him. If you step back and think about that, you can set up an Eero network in about 30 minutes, max. Uh, and that could be up to six Eros going into home. That's before pulling wires, of course, if we're doing that, or connecting through switches or some other things. But to actually set up the networking, have it operational, it's about 30 minutes. Um, how do you charge for that? Well, it's still networking. It's still your expertise. It's just still using those, labeling those devices, making sure that those devices are connected, making sure that those user profiles are set up, and doing it the right way rather than the wrong way that I've done it. So if you remember that, and you can add that line item charge in for just say 750 bucks or even a thousand bucks, it's dependent on your customer and your customer's needs. How how complex is that network? How many euros are actually installed? All of those things come into play in what you're actually charging. Um, and when I talked to him about it, he said, I'm going to try it on my next install that I have coming up next week. I got a telephone call back from him. He said, you know what, Paul? He said, that worked great. I charged 750 bucks, like you said, and I said, don't take 750, charge whatever it is you need to charge. And he said, no, I charged 750. It took me 45 minutes, I was completely done, and I made 750 bucks on in a 45 minute installation. That's pretty good profit margin there, especially when he could get back to doing those things that he needed to do around his video experience, his audio experience, and other things that he was doing in the home. So that, uh, that in itself uh, means a lot to me that it does work and it is out there and available for you to ensure that you're being as profitable as possible. Um, discounted pricing on that three pack of Eros in the accommodation program. Once you become an authorized reseller, you are eligible for a first time purchase discount. Um, but don't stop there because every technician that works for you should be registered under your name, your business name on the pro.ero.com site. There's a training opportunity for them. And once they complete their training, they'll be given an, that e we'll be send them an email and they're actually eligible for a, the similar discount from your, from uh, all that as what you received as a first time purchase. So now that that particular technician has that opportunity to have that same experience that the end user is going to have in their home. They'll have Eero in their home. They'll know it. They'll love it. They'll be able to install it easier. Uh, and it makes life a great opportunity. So again, don't forget about the technicians that are working for you, make sure they get registered underneath you um, for that same, number one, for the same pro transfer feature, as well as also for the, um, for the discount once they pass their exams. Great opportunity for them. Uh, really quick while I'm on pro, while I'm thinking about it, uh, pro transfer will be sending out an announcement, uh, hopefully later in the week, but it is now available on Android from the Play Store. Um, so if you're an Android user and you haven't um, been able to get to the Pro Transfer feature yet, um, it is now available from the Play Store. So you can go ahead and download that, and, it, and as long as you're tied together, um, you're able to get to that uh, Android application now. So um, authorized, again, where we want you to go. If you're not authorized, it's pro.ero.com, uh, and you can sign up. Uh, to become a dealer, it's relatively easy. And then I'm going to close out again for the reminders on why Eero. Um, a whole home coverage, I'll use my home as an example. I was using some gear, uh, won't call out the brand, but I had an outdoor access point uh, that wasn't giving me very good coverage. I adopted the product last October, so almost a year ago. Uh, and I've only been at Eero now for 120 days. So I've had the product a lot longer than what uh, uh, I've been actually selling for Eero. So, um, and I bought it to give it a go. Um, it was highly touted, highly rated, great reviews, similar to what we've already received on Generation 2. And I thought, I'm going I'm to give this product a chance and see what it will do. One of my Eero's is strategically placed by a window, um, but I have now have full backyard coverage, uh, and I measured the distance um, out before I actually started losing my signal, and it was at 152 feet from my window to the point that I actually lost signal. So that's a pretty good range if you think about it, and it was in a full, basically an arc or 200, 270 degrees 
of my backyard had great coverage. Um, I did it because um, we invested in some outdoor living space uh, several years ago, and I wanted to be able to get up and change my, I didn't want to have to get up and move into my signal area for my outdoor um, extension, if you will, or access point. Uh, while I was having guests over or whatever, and change my music station, change the volume, change my lighting, do those things that I would normally do with my phone, make it easier on myself. So my coverage is great in my home. I have full, full on throughput speed anywhere I am, indoors or out. So whole home coverage means a lot to me and it means a lot to my family. Just another quick anecdote there. Um, my daughter uh, was uh, volunteering for a um, elementary school first grade class this year for her scholarship, and she um, was wearing an Eero T-shirt. Um, and the little, a little girl in her class that she was volunteering for said, "Eero, I have that at home." And she, and my daughter said to her, "She said, well, what what do you know about it?" She said, "It just makes my Netflix work better." Um, and if you think about that, that's a testimonial from a six-year-old. Um, and she knew about the product, which is fantastic. She knew that it delivered what she was looking for as an end user. So again, I think that that, that is a testament to, uh, to the product and, and actually to brand recognition for us as well. Super simple to set up, get back to the things that the consumer is really gonna get interactive with, uh, stays new, making sure that the, all of those Devices are up to date with uh, the latest and greatest on security, getting better over time with feature updates, the logarithms to in improve throughput, uh, all of those things that are out there and available. And the, again, makes all our devices work better, both at the application layer as well as just working better across the spectrum. So I'm gonna leave it to there and Bill, let's go back to see what kind of questions we may have. Thanks, Paul, I appreciate it. So. Uh, one question that uh, came up is, um, are there any issues with uh, uh, Euro interacting with Sonos when um, Sonos is running its own wireless uh, network for connectivity in the house? Actually, no, there are not. Uh, there are some uh, tech bulletins that are out and available, and I think that they're on pro.euro.com. We can get those <coughs> to you. We work very closely with, uh, with Sonos. Um, to make sure that we do not interfere with them and they do not interfere with us. Uh, they've been a great partner with us on the technical side of things. So it is, uh, and by the way, I do have 19 Sonos speakers in my home um, and all of them actually are not wired. They are a wireless application. Bought them on a deal, guys. Didn't buy them, buy them at retail. Sorry about that. So we do work um, well with Sonos. We do work well with all automation companies as well. Do you have any competitive slides comparing your products to others like, uh, you know, Luxel, Cisco, Aruba, anything like that? Competitive slides as far as uh, Luxel or, or anything. Um, I do have. Um, we're finishing up some on our competitors in the space uh, as far as mesh networking is concerned, Aruba and Ruckus and those others. Um, guys, we're not naive enough to think that we're gonna get 100% of your installations. We can cover up to about 90% where you need specific features. Maybe it's a stockbroker uh, that works crazy hours of the night who needs failover, of course we don't meet that need. And that's more of a commercial or enterprise grade uh, system that they're going to, you're gonna look for in those applications. Um, but we'll work on getting some comparison features for uh, Luxel and or others in the marketplace in the very near future. I would look for those sometime around uh, the CDA timeframe. Are there any plans to allow uh, to set up a DDNS or VPN without using a router at the head end? It is a solution that is continued to be asked for. I don't know where it stands on the roadmap today. I will have to dig into that and Bill, I'll get an answer back to you. So keep track of that one and we'll get to make sure everybody gets the answer. I think it's just important to note that, um, you know, even though the products that you're, you know, viewing today are, um, uh, you know, the second generation of Euro. They keep uh, Euros uh, working with uh, the CI channel extensively and, 
um, really uh, developing a roadmap of uh, uh, products and features that are going to uh, really address the need of the integrator. So it's a uh, uh, you know there, there's more to uh, more to come. Yes, more to definitely more to come uh, on the on the pro roadmap. Uh, and I, I thank you, Bill, for that. The, the one reason I selected this particular position, I had a great job at a different company, uh, somewhat still tied to the consumer electronics industry that I've been in for, in some cases, as long as some of you guys are old. But um, the opportunity for me was when I sat down with uh, Nick Weaver, our CEO, and he expressed his interest and his passion for the channel. Um, it, it was, that's really what sold me. Uh, he gave me a glimpse into what he thought that the future for the custom install channel could look like. Uh, and we will be delivering on that promise uh, over, the, over the coming months of uh, improved, um, improved opportunities for us across all kinds of spectrums. So uh, we, we will have some, we have a very robust roadmap as we get closer to, uh, to the channel. Um, it's, a, we're still startup mode and we're getting through those things. Engineering resources are sometimes limited, uh, but we wanted to get that second generation product out before we started focusing on the needs of the pro channel and we are now focused. Uh, we have multiple teams that are focused on the needs of the pro channel right now. It's one of the biggest investments that we'll be making this year. Safe to say the best is yet to come. Yeah, it is safe to say that, but uh, I think there are a lot of good things that are coming up. I wish I could speak to them now, but I unfortunately can't. Uh, how about an outdoor access point? It's a great question. It's the fourth most requested item on the list from the dealer base. Um, currently, we do not have um, uh, it on the roadmap. Uh, I am working with an enclosure company. Um, doing some testing. Um, I've got uh, some more legwork and follow-up to do with them, uh, but hopefully we'll have at least an enclosure, a weatherproof enclosure that will be able to be used. Can you give a direct comparison to Luma? I can. Um, the opportunity there, I think, is that we get into, uh, while there are, they've done some work on DD and S, um, and tried to create a solution there. I think that uh, there's a couple of things. Number one, we can start with our form factor and our engineering. Uh, we start with the fact that we are cloud-based um, as, as far as our services are concerned and, and the operation of Eero, the fact that we get better over time, true tri-band mesh, um, wired and wireless networks across the home. There's, there's a list of features that we are uh, if you think about the number of updates that we've pushed out, all of the things that we've done uh, to ensure that our product is better, starting even with the chip itself. So a mesh network chip from Qualcomm uh, that we buy, everybody buys it, everybody that's doing anything close to what we're actually doing, we all buy the same chip. Um, but the difference there is, is that we don't take the reference design our teams actually make sure that those chips are wiped 100% clean. We're going to start here on the comparison, but we wipe those chips clean. There's no software loaded on them whatsoever, um, and we load our own stuff on. So that's how we get to do what we actually do as far as a company is concerned uh, and as far as the product is concerned. That's where, that's where all the secret sauce lies of how the thing actually operates. And more importantly, I think the next layer up from there is that cloud opportunity to ensure that we are getting better over time, uh, that we're updating. Uh, sorry about that. So we are, we are out there and available to, um, to be a better product over time. We're there. And then the feature set that's below that uh, very comparable, but again, I think it's more around our hardware and our software than anything else. Hopefully that answers your question. Look at the number of updates that have been given. Look at the number of crashes that have been given. I think one of the biggest concerns that I've heard in the marketplace recently from other dealers is volatility in pricing, uh, whereby uh, online last week it was less expensive than what the distributor was actually paying for it. Uh, can it integrate with uh, existing routers like an Airport Extreme using Time Machine? 
Uh, we can integrate with Time Machine. Uh, what you want to do is put the other router into bridge mode. We see it every day. That's how it's done in my house. Uh, PoE power, can the unit be wall mounted? Um, PoE and wall mount or ceiling mount are the number one and number two requested features um, from the dealer base today. Currently, um, the the product itself requires PoE plus. If you have a solution that would do USB C, uh, you have to remember that you would in your switch. Uh, again, you need um, to go to PoE plus, and there is a PoE splitter. There are some solutions that are out there. Uh, mounting solutions, I haven't seen anything for Eero as far as a mounting solution yet, um, but. Um, Still trying to remember a quick name for the for the layer that's in the switch that, or the splitter that you need uh, to make sure that it's in on, um, but it could be yes. There was a dealer in Charlotte that actually did some PoE work with it um, back in March, and it seems to be operating still okay. I think that it creates a weak link, um, but it is the number one and number two requested feature. And again, our engineering resources are dedicated to Pro Channel right now. And, and that's where the beacon really comes into play too. So you know, yes, when, when these things have to be uh, put in a location where uh, uh, a plug in the wall tethered unit, uh, the beacon is probably a better option. Exactly. Um, Want to thank everybody for joining us again today, and uh, uh, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. A reminder: the product is in stock, so. If you'd like to place an order, uh, please reach out to me after the uh, webinar or call your local um, uh, all-net customer service or branch. So uh, thanks again. I appreciate the, uh, the time. Uh, we had a great turnout today, and I uh, look forward to having you all back very soon. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate your time.